Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Brett Krug, Central Illinois, uh, Woodford County. I have my wife with me here today. Uh, we have three boys and a baby girl on the way due in June, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. Uh, one thing that wasn't in the presentation, I, I do own a lawn care landscape uh, business back home, so uh, I stay really busy between uh, being involved with the community, farming, and a and, uh, small business owner. So my farm is located in Woodford County. Uh, I started back in 2011. Uh, my first certified organic corn crop, or uh, yeah, well, it was corn, was uh, back in 2020. Uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, he's a first generation farmer as well, and he goes, hey, uh, you should try some organics. And I was hesitant with it, and uh, we just kept kept another farm in and another farm in, and, and uh, we're, we're about half, uh, half certified, and we have a couple of farms still in the transition phase. So uh, everything that we have in transit, we have one farm, it's uh, transition this year, year one. So by 25, we should have every, everything that we're gonna take organic into uh, certified organic. So here's just uh, the rotation that I run. So my transition acres, I always start with soybeans, and uh, then I go into wheat. And we usually frost seed clover into the wheat about the end of February, beginning of March, and uh, then we have our certified corn crop to follow. And, and we use the same rotation once we get into uh, our certified acres. And I'm, I'm hoping in the future that uh, I can start putting some more uh, crop rotations into this rotation. I know uh, we're seated right in the heart of the pumpkin, uh, pumpkin area. We have Libby's factory in Morton. So uh, they, they do run uh, quite a few organic acres. Uh, there's another guy, he's raising uh, organic pumpkins for seed. Uh, and he makes uh, a pumpkin seed snacks and they're, they're locally sold. So I'm hoping maybe in the future I can work with them and incorporate some different, uh, different crops into this rotation in the future. But here's what I use for fertility. We use uh, pelletized chicken manure. This year it was kind of hard to get, so we had to uh, switch over to some dried chicken litter. Um, got into... Uh, Got in with a local uh, swine producer. We got uh, local, or, uh, we did get some uh, liquid finishing barn manure this fall on some ground. So we were able to get a hold of uh, some, some liquid manure, finishing manure. Um, we use cover crops, that, that usually helps with our nitrogen for our corn crop. And then uh, polysulfate, it's a uh, polyhalite fertilizer and it's mined over in. Uh, Europe, I believe. So I have a local uh, fertilizer dealer that carries this stuff. And we just started using this um, just a couple of years ago to uh, supplement uh, potassium and a little bit of sulfur. So here's a little bit on that. Uh, I was approved without any restrictions to use this. I met with my uh, crop advisor from uh, Sun Ag and we just kind of went through the program that I was using for uh, fertilizer, we're putting on two tons ahead of corn uh, with the clover and then one ton with the uh, wheat. And we just, we just kind of realized we were just a little short on potassium going into the soybean years. So we've been using uh, polysulfate to help make up that shortage. And getting into that. So I've been using uh, 100 to 150 pounds an acre of, the, uh, of polysulfate. And they do have a website polysulfate.com. I think it was on the previous slide that you can get more information from. So now I'll get into the production of what we do start to finish through the year and uh, just the process that we go through. And, and So after, after we harvest, we, we get into our fertility passes. That's when we spread our manure, our uh, polysulfate. And it, uh, then we uh, usually, going into beans, We'll disc the stalks and get them sized a little bit, stir up a little dirt, start that uh, process of breaking the, the stalks down, and then we usually run the disc ripper following that. Just to get the trash buried and eliminate any compaction that we've caused with uh, row crop cultivating, especially running down the same tracks all year long. I like to get that uh, compaction layer out. So in the spring, we, uh, we make multiple field cultivator passes. Uh, we'll uh, We'll try and get in as early as we can in April when the ground's fit and get it leveled off. Um, that usually if there's any winter annuals coming, it usually takes care of those. And then we'll usually try and make a second pass, but sometime between that first pass and uh, planting to try and kill any weeds that are trying to push through uh, just to get a, uh, 
get a good kill. I don't, I don't want the weeds getting tall because once they start getting taller, they like to transplant easier. And then the third pass is usually right, right ahead of the planter. Usually, we like to plant usually right behind the field cultivator, just get, let it dry out just a little bit and then follow the planter. I don't like working ground a day early just because when that field cultivator runs, you're just kind of resetting the soil to uh, your, your clock starts ticking for the weeds to start growing. And if we did have any big escapes come through, we might make another pass just to, just to make sure we get those escapes taken out. But we really, we've only done a part of a field a fourth time and, and really the, the escapes that we have, we were able to walk them out or get them with the cultivator in the future. So it just kind of depends on the weed pressure. So going into planting, so I usually pick varieties that, that kind of fit the rotation. My area, in central Illinois, uh, going into the wheat acres, I like to grow that uh, like a 2-9 maturity to a 3-1 so we can get the wheat or uh, get the beans harvested so we can get wheat planted. If we uh, get into some additional crops, we might push our, our maturing our maturity range out just a little later just to capture a little more yield. But I usually shoot for about 155 to 160,000 uh, seeds per acre planting. It seems, to, it seems like a nice balance. When you rotary hoe, you're going to lose a little bit. It, I, I really haven't noticed that we're losing a lot when we're rotary hoeing, but uh, it just gives that nice balance. It's not too thick where they're going to lodge in the fall, but it still is enough that we can get a good canopy in the summertime to, to help shade those rows. So now, so now we'll get into some weed control. It, my weed control is pretty basic. We. Uh, you guys can tell I'm pretty heavy, heavy on the tillage side, but um, the timing is crucial. We usually make two passes at the rotary hoe pre-emerge. We're uh, usually following that planter about two days after we plant, and then we're trying to get in another couple days afterwards, after the first pass. Just trying to keep that top layer, that soil dried out so the, uh, the weeds can't, can't get enough moisture to uh, emerge. And then there is usually, what. What I, what I call the kind of the gray zone or the no-go zone. And those beans are trying to, to push through the soil. Guys have told me don't be hoeing in about a two-day range there. You want to get them uh, out of the ground and leafed out. Otherwise, you, can, you have a tendency to break, break some necks. Now, last year, we had some rain coming. It was, it was right in that range. It was, you know, do we wait? Do we go? We took the gamble and went. I really didn't notice much loss of uh, population due to that. But the uh, third and fourth passes are after the beans are up. Usually right after they leaf out that first trifoliate, we're back at it, hoeing again. And the fourth pass, usually five days, a little later than that. It's just kind of, you know, it just kind of all depends on weed pressure and, and what's, what's coming in the soil. And I, I know they've said it uh, at other presentations here, if, if you can see the weeds, you're too late with a rotary hoe. They're, they're just gonna keep on coming. You're not really gonna get them. Also, with my rotary hoe passes, I do try and go the opposite direction. So we, we'll go, uh, we might follow the, the identical passes of the planter the first time. We're going to stick a flag out there and go the opposite direction the second time. So continuing on weed control, once we're past the stage of a rotary hoe, the crop's getting tall, we'll come in with the field cultivator. Usually we'll make two passes through the year. And this is all dependent on how bad the weed pressure is, how tall the weeds are. We're trying to get them when they're below, you know, under two inches tall. And second pass, the same thing. It's, it's all dependent on uh, the weed pressure and, and how tall they're getting. We have gone in and, and cultivated a third time in the past, just we had some heavy weed pressure and, and had to get some things knocked out. So continuing on the weed control, we do, uh, I, I do have two crews that we use to uh, walk beans. Once they're just about to that canopy stage, we'll, we'll send crews out and start walking out the bigger weeds that we didn't get in row. One crew is a local Hispanic crew, uh, they, and uh, the other crew is Central Illinois Bean Walkers. My area is really heavy with organic production, and uh, we had a, a guy start a uh, business for walking beans. He gets all kinds of high school kids. He has a large, large crew of kids that love going out and walking beans, so it's, it's good because I don't want to walk beans. <laughs> it's, not, it's no fun job. But uh, 
depending on the weed pressure, we might make two complete passes across the field. I have walked some fields out that may necessarily didn't cause, the weed pressure wasn't going to cause a yield loss, but I didn't want those weeds going to seed and contribute to the weed bank for the, for the future years. So I, I do look at that and uh, we, try, we do try to be aggressive on uh, weed control. So double crop beans. The last couple of years we have dabbled a little bit with the double crop beans after wheat. We did this just to take advantage of the pricing that we had with, and the demand that there was. It, uh, to me with double crop beans, you gotta make it worth, you gotta weigh out the, the, the cash flow situation. Is it gonna be worth it? Because there is extra manure we apply on our double crop beans to go back into corn. But uh, we've, we've handled the trash. There's a lot of trash behind the combine. So we've handled the trash a couple of different ways. Uh, 21, we ran a moldboard plow across it to bury the trash, get a nice clean start. And then uh, last year, we just we ran the disc ripper across it after we shredded the stubble down to the ground with a bat wing. And then the process the same. We just come in with the field cultivator behind and, and get it leveled up. And so we have a nice seed bed to start with. So when I'm picking my varieties for double crops, I'm using a longer maturity to get that uh, reproductive phase stretched out. Usually uh, 3.6 to 3.8 is kind of what we're pushing for. And we up the population just due to what we're trying to get more plants with more pods and up to uh, 180 to 200,000. And the wheat control is all the same. It's, it is a little easier because the late summer rains isn't, aren't as frequent as spring. So we, uh, we push maybe three rotor hill passes and maybe one cultivation pass. So fungicide, we've, we've been applying fungicide on our soybeans too. So we'll start scouting the fields, usually before the R3 stage, seeing if we need to uh, be, be applying any fungicides to keep that plant healthy. We've used uh, helicopter and we've used uh, a ground rig to have this applied. So this is the program uh, Early Bird. They used this last year with our uh, with their helicopter. It's pace setter, connector O, uh, crop sill, terra fed, and uh, fertile gold micros. And the one thing that uh, I learned with micros is, is you need to have a tissue, tissue test done or you need to show deficiency in your soil samples to apply micros. I know um, early bird, they kind of fought with that because some guys didn't realize that. And I think uh, our area, some certifiers were pulling their hair out over this. But then we get in the harvest. We usually get uh, fairly aggressive going in the harvest because we're trying to get, get the beans off so we can plant wheat. So uh, usually we get down around 14, 15%, we'll stick them in a bin, we'll finish drying them off with the fan. And uh, what's, I mean, this, this process has been working for us. Our, our average on organics has been uh, mid to upper 60 bushel an acre on full season beans. Uh, 2021, we had a lot more moisture on the double crops to, to get that 38 bushel an acre. And then this past year, I think we only had three or four inches of rain on our double crops is all. So it, I was still pretty happy with that yield, all things considered. But going into it, here's our, here's our local bids uh, back home, the local delivery point we go to. And uh, I'd love to hear what works on your farm, what doesn't work, and uh, any questions or comments that I could try and answer.